Hey Johnny. Hello everyone. Welcome to the conference. My name is Lawrence McDaniel. I'm a full stack developer and a blogger in the Open edX community. Okay, so lessons learned. Let's break these down into, let's say, pleasant surprises and less pleasant surprises. Uh, generally speaking, it's been great. Uh, I have fully adopted Kubernetes. Uh, it, it's part of my infrastructure planning for all of my projects now, not necessarily the ones that run at scale, but any size, um, I'd say where there's a thousand learners and up, which is almost every platform that I work on. Mm. It mostly plays well with Tutor and Open edX software, so that's nice. Um, I would say Kubernetes is it's more resilient, it's definitely more scalable, uh, it's more economical, and with a little bit of work and effort on your part, uh, it can be made to be more secure. Not, not to criticize a native stack, uh, but there's interesting new tools that are made available to you in the Kubernetes paradigm that are not available in native builds, and so that's interesting. Uh, it's increasingly easier to work with um, as, as you get up the learning curve. Okay. The less than pleasant surprises. It's a short list, but let us let me air them out uh, for your benefit right now. Uh, most importantly for me, uh, at the point in time when I got involved with Kubernetes, the transition from a native build kind of approach or a tutor only, uh, using tutor on say an EC2 instance to deploy the software, to transition from that strategy to a Kubernetes paradigm was not seamless. Another thing, uh, this has since been overcome, but in my personal uh, experience, getting multiple environments of Open edX to coexist inside of a single Kubernetes cluster, which is pretty important requirement, I'd say really for anyone who's seriously considering uh, a transition to Kubernetes, that was a lot harder to do than I thought it was. It's done now, it works well, and there, there, just, there was a lot to that. I was focused on that particular problem for probably three or four months last year. Uh, and so suffice to say, there, there was a lot to it. Right. Uh, Kubernetes is really only viable if you also are adopting CICD and you're adopting infrastructure as code. Uh, I'll try to keep this high level and light and quick, but just borrow my confidence on that statement. Kubernetes uh, is a complex resource and uh, it, is tightly integrated with the other resources inside of your cloud account. And if you didn't have the benefit of a tool like Terraform for managing that, I don't think that you could do that successfully, especially in a production environment. Those are my observations, pleasant and less pleasant. Now, on to the actual lessons learned. Um, first and foremost, the way that I look at Open edX projects has changed because of my adoption of Kubernetes and the associated tools that it depends on, like CI, CD tools and uh, uh, infrastructure as code tools like, like Terraform. For me, uh, Open edX platforms today are effectively uh, the package software that's published by edX tkrill itself. It's the LMS, CMS, Discovery, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That package of software, a custom theme, a custom Open edX plugin, and your configuration data to make that platform your platform. And that's it. And so the big difference is uh, a couple of years ago, it was, it was normal or possibly even you know, recommended to fork edX platform the repository and then uh, do customization things. If you do that, there are lots of negative consequences to systems management because you forked that code base. And by extension, I don't mean only edX platform, but really any software that edX tkrill publishes, um, they've over time evolved and they provide tool sets today uh, that give you the ability to achieve your goals, uh, including customizations, without modifying their own source code. Uh, today, when I'm approaching a new project, um, here's what I would say, is that uh, edX tkrill, that tech team uh, does a, a really commendable job of, of QC, QA testing of their code base. And what they publish, they have a lot of confidence in that software, and so do I. If you change that software, you're undermining those valuable processes that they're adding to the project. And so you want to avoid that. And so to avoid it, 
you want to concentrate the artisanal nature of your project to the theme, to the OpenEdX plugin, and to your configuration, and that's it. Kubernetes as a concept, it benefits enormously from a community approach to solving problems. And that is happening today in real time with my colleague Johnny here, um, or, or there. Uh, folks that might be in the room right at the second, there's, there's quite a few people, individuals and organizations uh, that are part of the OpenEdX community that are technical leaders in this topic. Uh, I want to point out specifically Edunex, not, not just Johnny here in the room, Johnny has colleagues, uh, uh, won't say anyone's names, but um, I work one-on-one -on -one with multiple technology professionals at Edunext and also at OpenCraft who are peers and or mentors of mine on the Kubernetes topic. And that group is collaborative, they're very accessible, there's a growing set of individuals inside of edX Tkrill itself. Um, with uh, that knowledge base. And that work group and others, hopefully in the future, uh, are building the tools that this community needs to make Kubernetes uh, easier to onboard, easier to manage, uh, and a, you know, in general terms, a better paradigm for managing your OpenEdX platform. Because of the work that I began doing with Kubernetes, I now look at OpenEdX projects in strict terms of configuration, build, and deploy as very discrete activities uh, where certain things belong in one of those three categories and only in one of those three categories. And so that it's had a, a pretty significant effect, practically speaking, on how I'm approaching you know, the, the specifics of getting any uh, OpenEdX platform up and running and keeping it up and running. And lastly, uh, the nature of my work has changed because of my transition to Kubernetes. Today, most of the work that I do today is spent inside of Terraform. Um, the, the general pipeline for me is that my Terraform code is generated from the templating tools that are inside of cookie cutter open at X. And so that's a starting point. And it produces a base of Terraform modules that I use for managing the VPC, uh, the MySQL service, Mongo service, Kubernetes itself, the many things that I install into Kubernetes, all of that is taken care of with uh, Terraform. And so I'm inside of Terraform probably five or six hours a day. And then the balance of my day is spent with, uh, I guess what I would call the more traditional tools that I used to work with all the time, Python, React, a um, little bit of HTML, and um, so on and so forth. Uh, but those, be, I'd say because of the effort that I put into the infrastructure and the operating platform uh, and the fact that I no longer fork code from MedX Tkrill um, has, has reaped some dividends. I'd say that, you know, generally speaking, my work quotient you know, on a project by project is better. It's more efficient. Um, and so I, I think I can safely say that I'm able to support more clients than I could before, and that that trajectory is ongoing, that I think there's uh, more efficiency to be realized on my part uh, in the over the midterm because of uh, the work that I do with Kubernetes and the associated tool set. Okay, that's it for me. The big show really is going to be Johnny. I'm very much looking forward to seeing the recorded version of this presentation. Uh, Johnny is uh, is definitely a mentor of mine. I'm very pleased to be in the room. Uh, it's quite an honor, uh, frankly, for me to have been uh, asked to participate as part of Edunext presentation to this work group. Edunext as an organization is, uh, they're the technology leader on the topic of Kubernetes with OpenEdX software. So definitely pay attention to what they have to say and take it to the bank. All right, enjoy the conference. Ciao.